Hello, welcome back to the podcast. This week's episode, I talked to Professor Goat, a Lego mock builder and a Lego enthusiast overall. Um, He does some pretty cool research on different types of Lego figures and all sorts of different types of research to do with Lego and the history of Lego, all that great stuff. But we talk about it more in, in detail later on in the podcast so stick around to find out more about that but um i'll leave a link to the channel that he's involved in club brick in the description along with the club brick discord server um so you can join and interact with him and all the members of the club brick youtube channel if you want to check that out um but i apologize for the squeaky chair noises that are in this episode because I had to swap my chair for a stool, which was not a good idea. I will definitely swap back to the old chair that I used uh, for the other episodes. But for this episode, there is a lot of squeaking in the background when I'm talking. uh, So I apologize for that. Um, I also apologize for missing last week's episode. Uh, The guests that I had lined up had to cancel. Uh, I actually had two guests lined up and they both had to cancel. So, um, yeah, I apologize for that. Uh, Hopefully I get to talk to those people in the future and then that'll make up for it. So if you want to be a guest, um, let me know via Instagram or Twitter DM and uh, we'll see when that can happen. But um, I would definitely love to talk to more people in the community just about anything Lego or brick filming, so if you are interested in those things and want want a a place to talk about them uh, publicly, then let me know and we can sort out a a date and time to record an episode. Um, Yeah, but without further ado, uh, here is this week's episode of the Nothing But Bricks podcast. Enjoy! Welcome to episode 9 of the Nothing But Bricks podcast. Today I'm joined by Professor Goat. Uh, Welcome to the show. Thank you. It is wonderful to be here. So um, to start off, I guess we could talk about uh, what got you into collecting Lego. Well, I have been exposed to Lego for all my life. I uh, started my collection back in... uh, I I started off with Duplo sets, of course, as we all do. However, I quickly evolved to classic space and lego star wars as that became more prominent over the years um my father had a co-worker who had a huge tub of older legoland era sets and that create was sort of the backbone of my foundation in lego i um i had some of the i had various other sets from town themes over the years and i i also was quite into bionicle for a few years as well However, it was the classic space and you working with those simple parts that really got me engaged into uh, what Lego is and working within those limits. Cool. Yeah. So I'm um, in the last episode of the podcast. We were talking about how um, like Lego is so popular because it can mean so many different things to different people. So um, I guess what I was wondering is well, what is Lego to you? OK, that is an interesting question. Um, I have to say, uh, for me, Lego is an opportunity for self-expression and I love seeing, I love seeing sets that are very creative and explore different ideas because when I, when I was younger, I would look at the sets and back in the early 2000s and 90s, uh, Lego had a motto called just imagine and on the back of every single box or many of them. Um, they had alternative models that you could build. And I know I spent several times trying to build these alternative models. They don't give you instructions, but without them, that forces you to improvise, to see how they created this and to invent your own solutions. And that in turn uh, inspires your own creativity to build your own things. And personally, that is what it means to me. It gives me an opportunity to tell a story, to create a world, and uh, see what worlds other people have created. And it's a great atmosphere. Yeah, that's a really great way of looking at it. Like, 
um, people might inspire other people to create a whole world out of Lego. Yeah, that's co really cool. Um, so do you like keep up with the sets that would come out now, or um, have you kind of stopped paying attention to them? Um, I do keep uh, I do keep an eye on various sets. I don't. Uh, I don't actively watch Twitter and all of the Lego Muse sites to get it right as it comes out. However, when I see there is a release coming out with, of a theme or that I'm interested in, I will check it out. I usually check out the newest wave of Ninjago because of the sheer variety that wave produces. Uh, city is city, but sometimes they'll throw in something weird like an underwater sub-theme or space. So... I look for what's interesting to me myself. Cool. Yeah, that goes back again to um, what that Lego can be anything for everyone, basically. Exactly. The weirder, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I noticed that you're in a lot of the Club Brick streams and uh, involved with the channel quite a lot on the the server. So um, I was wondering, like, how did you come across uh, Club Brick? Well, I was uh, scouring Discord. Um, I wanted an opportunity to share my scientific research, and of course, King John Brick and I quickly interacted. I showed him, I showed him my Nexus Temple mock, which is a six foot nine giant temple uh, from a from Lego Universe. It is an MMO from 2010. The Nexus Temple only appeared in concept art and some of the promotional material however it never actually appeared in game so i wanted to actually recreate that because it was such an inspiring item and king john brick himself is a lego universe fan himself so that allow that bond is kind of what spurred us uh into talking more and eventually he invited me to join the channel seeing my talent and Apparently, I have a good speaking voice, uh, allegedly. So I, I've just rolled with it. I've been happy to contribute and share my research, and it's been quite enjoyable. Cool. Um, what kind of research would you do? Well, I uh, I am a researcher of transdimensional anthropology. Basically, I study alternate dimensions, especially ones that are aligned with Lego. Okay, so to explain that in more detail... Uh, Supposedly, there's an infinite amount of universes out there, and out of those infinite amount of universes, some of those will consist entirely of Lego. So if you can identify them and study them, that is my goal in my research, to, to view other, other perspectives of reality and how that is framed in a Lego context. That sounds really interesting. Cool. Um, so how long have you been researching for? Well, I, uh, I started out in the University of Colorado. Uh, I pr quickly acquired my degree in transdimensional anthropology before it was declared a quack science, um, which I disagree with because quack science is still science, just of a different form. Then I joined the Bradford Rant Institute of Cosmic Kinesis for about five years back in 2010. Uh, right around the release of Lego Universe. And since then, I have uh, been doing more independent research, uh, crossing over with Bradford Rant whenever our interests align. And that's how how it's been for us for the last while. Hmm. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, that's really cool, actually. Yeah. Um, so how... Uh, much of an involvement would you have with the Club Brick channel? Um, I would say I'm one of the most prominent members. We have King John him Brick himself, of, of course, His Majesty. We have uh, Hellcat slash Epic City Brick slash Chris. We have Gath, and we have some new members, uh, Bricks Mania and uh, the Minister Prime Brick, as he's going by now, I believe. So it's a slowly expanding group. We are focusing on putting out um, commentaries, stop motion videos, and of course, news updates and ideas videos. But we're looking forward to do uh, more comprehensive 
content going forward. And we're not quite sure what that'll look like just yet. We'll have to wait and see what the future brings. Hmm, cool. I, I saw one of the, the videos on the channel was like the different types of plastic on uh, some of the figures that they like print and the different kind of quality that it gives. That was really interesting. That's that's the variety of research I enjoy doing personally. And I look, look forward to bringing that out in, a, in the future with future updates. Um, I'm considering starting a series in that same vein called The Evolution of X. And each, each episode, I will take about between 5 and 15 minutes to explore a different topic from the different colors in a Lego to how uh, Lego tells stories to how uh, the concept of war has been explored in Lego media. Hmm, cool. That, that sounds really interesting, actually. Yeah, looking forward to seeing those videos. It'll probably start either later this month or early next month. Nice. Um, so uh, do you like build mocks as well? Of course. Um, I'm currently working on a few large mocks. It's somewhat scattered. I've aimed for this large scale on several things, and I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. One of the things I'm building is a entire town built entirely out of pieces from the 80s. That's going back to my roots with that giant tub of classic bricks. I want to go back to working within that framework. And I'm also exploring with spaceships. I'm more of an architectural builder, so I, I enjoy stepping out of my comfort zone, trying something that is both unique but still within my personal building style. All right. So um, what kind of uh, builds are you working on right now? Um, the biggest one right now is a four foot tall, a uh, four foot long spaceship called the Astur, and I hope to get more into that going forward. Um, it's somewhat top secret, I must say, and I'm discussing how we want to display that with a club brick team, and I'll have more updates on that probably early fall, early to late fall. It is a monumental task. It's going to be a narrative driven um series and that's all i can really say about it right now oh, cool looking forward to it anyway um so what's like the biggest uh mock that you've done overall i'd say that is by far the nexus temple um at, it's over six feet tall nearly seven feet it has over 200 minifigures in it and a giant spire it has a transparent column of trans blue pieces which is stands over a foot tall and it was very interesting trying to get all of these different elements to work together into a co coherent monolith i never want to build something quite that large again at least for the next several years it was it took probably the better part of a uh, between a thousand and two thousand dollars between my existing collection and what I had to buy on BrickLink. So that is not as an experience I'm eager to repeat on that scale. Hmm. Uh, right, that sounds cool. I'll definitely look it up after this. So, um, oh yeah, uh, you mentioned earlier that you focus more on the architecture side when building uh, your mocks and things. Um, so how would that like affect uh, say if someone was going for more of the focusing more on the way it looked rather than like the structure it had um i say i say architectural i mean more of a in the building sense however what i look for very often is shaping and consistency so when i form a when i start building a mock one of the key factors i have in mind is how smooth it is i like to minimize or eliminate studs that in my mind is the definition of a polished model every exposed stud should be there for a reason and sometimes that's just due to budget limitations which is respectable however i i like to experiment with weird angles i um you can do a box shaped model just fine however if you add extra angles and work these different angles to work together that will make your model stand out far more than anything else and that is what i look for or to 
and it's much easier with buildings in my opinion because you have a foundation to work on however as I've explored spaceships you have uh, several more factors to take into consideration so um what would be the most like uh, what would be the mock that you've applied that the most to where it's like crazy shapes coming out of it and stuff um i'd say that every mock experiences that to some degree i very rarely make a mock that doesn't involve heavy snot or uh hinges in some degree or another uh my favorite mock of all time is the head separator which um the head separator is a very simple concept. It takes the brick separator and it applies it to a minifigure head. It's basically a PG guillotine. So it uses snot techniques to form the framework in order to support the giant chopping block on top. And however, the biggest use is in the Astro, I'd say. I have, I'm working with several different angles to achieve a spearhead shape. Even the windscreen is at a crazy angle that is very difficult to support. And I'm still not quite, I'm still working out how to fully support it. Um, once that, uh, once I show that off, I feel that you'll, you'll understand and appreciate all of the effort and detail that went into the shaping of crazy mocks like that. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. So, um, what would be your favorite, like, Lego franchise that, that they, um, have in the set that is very difficult um it's a it's overall of all the current themes i have tremendous respect for ninjago because it isn't really a theme anymore it's more of this expansive universe with each each season which is now every six months they explore a different concept like mythology or uh sci -fi sci-fi vr world or a ice realm there is no consistency whatsoever it is incredibly weird and while i feel that the story has suffered somewhat for that the models and the variety of parts you get from the ninjago theme is incredibly remarkable however my favorite theme of all time is probably the it's very i have to say the 90s era of space really sticks out to me in the terms of variety you get considering the parts limitations while while past 2000 we've seen a there's been an explosion in parts of different styles and colors and different minifigures however i especially liked that we could see with the nine with the 90s space you saw all of these different factions and each of these had a slightly different personality and style to them and they used very simple parts to express this personality in different ways. Like the Spireus, which is a spy theme, have all sort of solar sonar panels, and they assimilate the technology of the other space themes of the time. While a Blacktron has very dark color scheme, and they're, they're sort of this nefarious uh, spy organization. There is Unitron, which is more of a military theme. It has much more rugged, uh, grittier looking vehicles. And I, I quite like that. And I wish we saw a return to that. However, as Lego has become more narrative driven, they've moved away from the faction format. So I have, I have to say that era, that era of ambiguity, it forced you to tell your own stories. And that is something I dearly miss in modern Lego themes. Um, yeah, I feel like that's, also like stems from lego trying to kind of like milk some some kind of franchise like marvel or dc because it's like the most popular franchise or star wars so they like just kind of sell this set with a specific idea in mind without uh experimentation allowed absolutely absolutely i'd say that since ninja the success of ninjago um lego has been been very reluctant to try new things shima and nexo knights were very much trying to be successors to ninjago but never quite landed and never received the same footing perhaps in part because they were competing with an already successful franchise uh chima interestingly enough actually had the faction 
orientation of team actually had the factions of the 90 space uh even in the animal forms you had the bears the hippie the hippie bears no the hippie gorillas they had the lazy bears and the nefarious crocodiles the capitalist ravens the communist eagles and all of that stuff and it was an interesting concept that I feel like for many people didn't mesh in the way they could truly grasp. I think the style of the theme bothered a lot of people. It bothered me personally, despite how interesting and unique many of the models were. I appreciate the weirdness of the theme, but I don't think it had the same resonance of 90 Space or Ninjago, which it was a hybrid between. Hmm. Right. Um, yeah, it does sound interesting, but... Uh... Yeah, it definitely wouldn't be one of my favorites, anyway, um, from the sound of it. Um, hmm. So uh, you mentioned before that uh, 90s space would be your favorite like genre of Lego, but uh, what would be your favorite um, kind of type of world to build a mock around? I like to build my own worlds. I like to take a world that has a lot of ambiguity. So you get a springboard for a story, and then the develop the right. And so Lego will give you a set, and they say go crazy. So that is something I quite appreciate. Hmm. As for themes that encourage that, I'd say themes such as Space Police Three. It had a little bit more of a narrative than the '90s space themes. However, it still gave you a lot of flexibility. I quite enjoyed building a lot of Ninjago mocks at the time. Even I especially enjoyed the first several seasons of the Ninjago television series and built in many mocks, upgraded versions of the sets as they appeared in the television series. Um, what else? Of, um, probably of all my favorite LEGO worlds, the unique world created in LEGO Universe has stuck with me the most. I invested over a month of my life in, a, in the span of about a year or uh, in the span of about two years in that game. Maybe it wasn't a full month, no, but I left the game running a lot. So I was exposed to that a lot. And that's how I am met a lot of other Lego fans. So that was a connection point. I enjoyed the flexibility of the story. There wasn't any set rules. Um, there could be pirates, there could be ninjas, there could be soldiers, there could be knights, and all of them, all these characters have to work together from all these different backgrounds and they fit into the same world flawlessly. The same with the, nin uh, with the Lego movie, of course. It gives you an opportunity to take any character. If you have literally any Lego set, any licensed theme, um, it could be Lego City Construction, it could be a Marvel superheroes set, and that would all fit within the Lego movie universe, and you could tell a story, any any kind of story, set in a mo universe like the Lego movie universe, and that is entirely up to you for how you interpret that. Yeah, cool. It's it's also like um, the Lego Dimensions game, which we talked about in the last uh, podcast as well, but that also reminds me, um, what do you think of the, the Lego games that... Uh, just overall um i feel that uh tt games has become this monolithic empire that they get basically they get the first rights to make every single lego game and at this point i i really enjoyed the first um lego star wars the complete saga saga when that came out on uh it was on gamecube wasn't it yes it was on gamecube i believe I, I, that was a fantastic game in my opinion. However, like, um, TT Games hasn't really innovated that formula in a way that I find particularly engaging. It's, it's the same formula. They've updated the graphics, they've added voice actors, and it's created this stagnancy. It's the same with how comfortable Lego is with Ninjago. They've found this comfortable pattern, which is enjoyable. However, it lacks the experimentation and uniqueness that made Ninjago, the Lego movie, 
and all these other things so unique at first. Yeah, um, yeah, I totally agree that the the more unique kind of ideas uh, and like lore type, um, uh, the new t- kinds of lore that you can come across for random Lego sets, to know that there's a lot of, uh, like that there's there's a whole world behind sets that would be coming out for these things is a very cool um, way of looking at it when you're looking to buy a new set. Yeah. um, It gives you different levels of engagement. Um, Like with a... When you just get a Bionicle character, um, you could either take that as... You could get two Toa and have them fight each other, and that's perfectly fine. But there is also a huge epic story behind it and all these different heroes and villains have different personalities and you could just watch a few commercials to get that or you could collect the novels and you can see uh the full depth of these characters or you could take some of the ideas and make your own fan story and it's the it's the flexibility for creativity and using it as a springboard to build your own world that i really appreciate yeah uh, like um on the I, I know i keep going back to it, but on, on the the last episode uh the the guest was explaining how sometimes they play dungeons and dragons like with uh, lego figures as like their character models to represent what they look like in that world i thought that was really cool absolutely that is a that that would be i've never actually played dungeons and dragons but if if i did i i'd that would be how i'd want to do it um I have heard that there's a game called Brick Wars with a that's just B R I K Wars, and that I'm not sure if that's the one he's talking about, but I enjoy the crazy frenetic action that uh, Lego can bring to storytelling, and it's way more fun when you have other people collaborating, giving input, and each everybody's ideas creates this fusion that either works together or maybe it contradicts but you'll learn something in the process yeah sorry i i was hoping i could ask you about um i saw that on the the club brick channel you're doing some uh, sorting through like a, a big box of lego stream thingies and um, so i was wondering um if you could talk about that for a bit okay um so you're probably referring to the five dollar tub of lego um I'm sure that many people have, everyone always wants to find cheap Lego, easily accessible. And the best place to do that are, of course, uh, watching Amazon clearance, uh, watching clearance at toy stores, Walmart, Target, etc. You'll occasionally get a good deal. Uh, Over the last 10 years, they've gotten a lot more savvy, I feel. Um, You'll be lucky to get uh 25 to 50 percent off on clearance and used to you could get much closer to more reliably get 80 and 90 percent off um it it still depends on the locality of your store how much demand uh, lego is in in your area however if you want absolute bargains you have to scour through thrift stores and yard sales and Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist are especially good resources. Just checking that once a day. You won't find... Usually it'll be garbage. It'll be some mom thinking they have... Trying to sell their kids set. They know they paid $30 for it. But it's not worth that much when you're reselling it. But occasionally you'll get a mother on the other end of the spectrum. Who just wants to get rid of it because... She's tired of st- stepping on little Timmy's bricks all over the floor. So she'll she'll put that up for sale for five bucks. And you just have to keep an eye on it and um, pick it up as soon as possible. So just keep an eye out there and you can eventually find some cheap Lego. As for actually the sorting process, um, there are many different ways to sort. Uh, the two general ways to sort are either by color or or by type. Now, with color sorting, that is very straightforward. However, it actually leads to more confusion if you have a much larger collection like myself, because 
all of the color, you'll have a huge tub of one color, and there's a part that only exists in that one color, but it is much difficult to pick out because everything is a giant. You're looking, scattering a giant tub of Lego for a yellow piece. However, if you sort by type and you're looking for a one by two brick in yellow, um, you're looking through a bunch of one by twos and you're, uh, unless you're colorblind, you'll immediately pick out the one by two brick. That is why that, that's why sorting by type is the superior method, even though it requires more boxes and more time to pull off. Um, initially, you'll want to sort by category. Otherwise, you'll have huge amounts of tubs. Do not sort by every single part initially. So do a little bag for minifigures. Do normal size bricks, then flat pieces, Technic, etc. And as you go down, down, you can sort the bricks by the sizes of bricks or the types of minifigure pieces, torsos, legs, etc. And as you do that, you'll eventually get a collection that is very organized. And when you when you snap your fingers and say, "Hey, I need a one by two yellow piece," you'll know exactly where to find it. That's that's a really uh, insightful way of um, like if anyone's building mocks, uh, that's a really helpful way to uh, sort the pieces to do that. Um, it does take a it does take a considerable time investment, though. So what I recommend doing is just having uh, either myself on in the background during a sword and stream, or you could put on some, you could binge some show during the weekend that you've been many, meaning to get around to. Expect to just relax, take your time. Don't overdo it. Take breaks. Yeah. Uh, just let it be a relaxing experience. Don't rush it. Hmm, cool. Yeah, I, I should probably do that soon because um, I just keep my Lego in like one massive box altogether. Um, yeah, definitely sounds like a cool way to to relax and just like be productive at the same time. Of course, I've been doing this for years, and I've never actually fully sorted my entire collection because I always get new stuff. I always build mocks, and that sets me back. But it's the continual process of self improvement, making things more clean, going against entropy. It it feels it feels good at the end of the day at the end of a sorting session. Cool. You mentioned before that there's like stop motion videos put up on the channel, but um, do you think you'd ever uh, like dive into the stop motion end of Lego? I am looking into it. Uh, I'm, I'm currently exploring. I'm currently experimenting with different styles and techniques. And a lot of it has to do with the confidential project I'm working on. So I'll be experimenting with stop motion as well as various other animation techniques and edit editing to accomplish the story I'm trying to tell. But I don't, I used to do stop motions quite frequently. And when I was a teenager, I'd have a, a relatively cheap camera with a, an SD card. I'd just take pictures of that with a simple onion skin program and throw that together. I don't know if any of those stop motions have survived until today, but that was a very fun exercise in patience. I'll say that. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, especially when like a, a figure would fall over or something, and then you have to like line it up again. I I've seen your work. I I know I know the pain you must endure. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we talked about it before, uh, me and, uh, King John, as, as you call him, um, about, uh, the Discord server, but, um, I was wondering what your involvement in the server was. Well, I am technically a Mithrin, so I'm sort of the, I'm a moderator rank, however, I, I don't really like policing. I, I enjoy talking to a few different People, especially more of the builders, it's nice to see. It's nice to, to talk to people who are creatively minded or share in, or ju are just enthusiastic about Lego. Um, so I'm usually quite busy between all my lab work and all my projects, but I enjoy uh, just spending time to talk talk with people. And I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a very good moderator. I'll say that. I'm very hands off in that uh, respect. 
right? Uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, leave the, the link to the server in the description if anyone wants to check it out, if, if that's all right. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I highly recommend everyone check out the, the streams as well. Oh, well, I'm planning on resuming the sorting streams next week. Um, I, after the last 12-hour stream, I was a little bit burnt out. And frankly, StreamYards only lets me use 20 hours, and I used all that up in less than a week. So I'm going to let that reset. Then I'll, we'll be back to doing about 5-hour streams of sort and stream every week on Thursdays, most likely, in addition to our mock hour slash mock roast contents on Fridays. Cool. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun to just like watch all the um different builds that people have, like you were saying, to experience what other people's worlds are, that like their kind of vision and then their execution. Absolutely. Seeing um like I've like personally especially when I was younger, I'd uh, scour Flickr for hours, looking for all the different uh, alien worlds, all the different spaceships, all the different castles, all the different secret layers people have built. And I'll look at all the different techniques they've used. Maybe they have a new piece that they just got their hands on and they're experimenting with it in a new way. Or they found this old part that's basically unusable, like... um. I'm trying to think of something weird. Someone finding a clever use of a Galador part. That makes your that makes you think. And seeing people do that in uh, every week on Mock Hour is really enjoyable, especially when there's a story to accompany it. I very much enjoy a fun story. If it even if it's just a quickly made mock, if it has a fun and engaging story, that's uh, that's half the experience. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, what were the like some of the uh, some of your favorites from like the past week or so? Hmm. I have to say there was I forget I forgot who made it. Let me go back and check. One of the things that have been lately uh, severely frustrating for me is on Rogues My Mock, where I've tried to provide quote unquote constructive criticism to people's mocks. They've been posting good mocks that I've had trouble roasting. And I told them that's not fair. Um, one of them is Xenon's uh, King John Mech, which is King John Brick, a mecha suit for him. The uh, His beard has guns in it, which I find absolutely hysterical. And it like it's a simple build quickly made, but it shows a lot of fun and creativity put into it. And that's... That is a huge part of what I'm looking for. Uh, Rise puts out a lot of interesting vehicles every week. Uh, there's one more that really caught my eye this week. One moment. Here we are. It's Xenon's tank. Xenon's really good. Uh, Mr. Morgoon is another one of my favorites. He's more of a character builder. He's especially good at creating weird alien-looking creatures. So yeah, Xenon, uh, Mr. Morgoon, and uh, Rise, Rise Comics, are all fantastic builders. And we have so many more that keep popping up week after week. We have a, I think it's DKS Bricks, who consistently puts out giant, giant planes that are, they're absolutely enormous and incredibly well sculpted models. So yeah. It's it's fun to see what everyone builds. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's really cool to see that um, everybody's got a different way of uh, different ideas and different like everybody's creative in different ways. Absolutely. Um, so are there any like future plans? I know you're saying you're working on a like a series for the World War Lego sets, but are there any um plans after that as to what you'd want to explore next? Well, there is, of course, the Astur series that I'm working on. Um, it's probably going to be, depending on how long the the channel lasts and how long my interest lasts, 
it's a series I plan to work, I have planned out to go on for years with several different story arcs, different worlds to visit. Um, from all over the, from visiting places from all over the Lego timeline. And I believe that it could be a lot of fun once that actually takes flight. That is uh, one of the reasons I joined the channel is to uh, uh, cultivate my abilities to uh, talk to people and uh, use it as an excuse to shield the Astur whenever it finally comes out. I, I apologize for not being um, overly detailed on it. I'm a, I'm a little tight-lipped because um, it's, it's still very much in the early phases of development. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. You can uh, keep secret or whatever you want to. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Um. Well, I heard about the. I think it was a few months ago. It's kind of old news now, but uh, I think there are a few new uh, Avengers sets that are coming out. Uh, did you hear about them? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I do watch um Lego Marvel a decent amount. It's been It's been fun to see the evolution because with the end of with the climax of Endgame, the and the the thing, there aren't any huge movies coming out in the meantime. So we're seeing more, um, we're seeing different kinds of Lego Marvel sets, more uh, comic inspired. It's uh, without the constraints of the MCU driving the sets, which I absolutely adore the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's nice to see a totally different direction for Lego Marvel and the new Avengers Tower looks absolutely phenomenal. It's a bit too much for me to shovel out without a sale, but it's it's nice to see all of the it's nice to see a enhanced version of that of of that model from the Age of Ultron version. Yeah, I was I was definitely surprised to see that there was like a lot of different there's a lot of detail uh, on the inside of it anyway um and the i was really excited to see the iron man suits that they have with it they look pretty cool yeah constantly putting out new iron man suits i know there's a lot of collectors of those out there i am not one personally but it is fun seeing constantly new uh, versions of iron man being put out every single year in addition to all the other characters and another little thing that I really hate myself for is uh, the new AIM agents with uh, Marvel this year have a little metallic, uh, dark metallic uh, breathing mask. And I still haven't got my hands on one of those. I'm going to get a bunch of those someday. Cool. Um, I'll definitely look those up and see if they're like available on uh, one of those like resale. Brickling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to think of yeah um so how do you feel about uh knockoff brands of lego um well if you haven't seen my uh leg my uh, club brick video on plagiarism i am very uh disapproving of knockoffs um as i said in the video there was a sliding scale of plagiarism there's um there's the green level which is it's okay if you if you are into that, which consists mostly of military themed, um, high high quality, high quality parts that are meant to go with uh, the Lego system. It's meant to augment the Lego play experience, while other models like uh, Mega Bloks is meant to more of substitute for it. And while Mega Bloks does put out a bunch of unique parts. The quality of them is significantly inferior. It doesn't have the same gloss or shine. It's much more cheaply produced. And when you compare a Lego piece and a Mega Bloks piece, there's there's absolutely no comparison as to which one's superior. Of course, the worst ones are the Chinese knockoffs, which at least with at least with a uh, at least with a uh, Mega Bloks slash Mega Constructs as they're going by now. Uh, they go through the effort of creating new parts. They're trying to create new ideas. Even if I don't don't like Mega Bloks, I can respect them for not stealing intellectual property overtly. 
but the Chinese knockoffs like the now defunct Le Pen um, and all the other Chinese knockoffs which have variations of the Lego logo with random letters with mostly of Star Wars they'll deliberately t deliberately take a existing Lego set and they'll totally copy it especially license sets th since those retain the most value in the aftermarket um, Yes, those are absolutely the most despicable companies out there. And you have to realize they're not they're stealing from multiple people in the process. They're stealing from, of course, the license owner who receives a cut. They're stealing from uh they're stealing from Lego itself for the set for the design of the set, and they're stealing from Lego again because all the individual parts, like Lego creates dozens if not hundreds of new parts every single year and those parts take thousands of dollars they spent lego spends millions of dollars uh designing new parts every year and what these companies will just take these new sets take these new parts what lego has spent millions of dollars engineering and just copy it it's one thing if you want to borrow the brick and knob configuration that's been around for a long long time now but to take newer pieces complex pieces that are distinctly lego that is utterly despicable to me and it's also a theft to the consumer because what will happen is western resellers will buy a bunch of cheap licensed minifigures from china and then they'll sell it on the united states on ebay for like five bucks these things cost literally pennies to produce and you can and some mother or grandmother will see oh uh, my son little Timmy wants this it's just five dollars I'll order that and when it arrives uh, the kid will be super disappointed when they realize wait a second this isn't official Lego this is cheap and it'll break when you try to play with it well maybe they won't notice uh, maybe they'll get it returned or refunded or something like that, but I find the pro I find that process utterly despicable. Yeah, it's definitely um, it's like what we were saying in the the last episode. I know I keep going back to it, but um, there are a lot of similar things that uh we were talking about. But um, it's it's how brand loyalty can go a long way with uh because Lego is probably going to be there for a lot a long time after all these brands um because of their like because they are kind of the innovators in that kind of uh, uh company stuff not just innovators but they consistently put out quality products a lego piece that you have today will be compatible with a lego piece all the way back to the 60s and no other company can boast that you can it's very rare for you to take a have two toys from the 70s and from today have them side by side and have them work together seamlessly uh, provided there isn't too much play wear on them of course so that is a huge part of the my loyalty is the quality the consistency of all the little parts and all the, the other toy companies are fine but i don't believe any have if you have a lego set um if you have okay so if you have a transformers character like starscream i don't know any of the transformers characters but i know that's the name of one so you have a, a starscream character and you like him you'll hang him up on a shelf but then you want to get uh this other action figure that is that doesn't fit in so you sell him for a little bit and you get this other character while with Lego, you'll get a you can get a set, and uh, you'll get a Star Wars set. Then you decide you're into Marvel superheroes, so you can just take apart the uh, Star Wars set and use that to augment the play experience with the Marvel set, which you can't do with um, with any other toy, uh, any other non-building toy. And I feel that that's one of the main reasons for Lego success. Another consideration for me is 
over the next 10 years, Lego is going to be transitioning over to a um, organic based plastic, which is both exciting and terrifying because certain parts won't be able to be produced anymore. And we don't know quite how that will affect the quality just yet. Um, I like the concept, but there's a chance it could uh, cause a reduction in quality. We'll just have to wait and see what happens over the next 10 years with that. That sounds like a an interesting uh, change anyway. Yeah, hopefully it works out for the best. They've uh, they've invested millions of dollars. They're they're not cheaping out on the research and development side of this. So, I'm I'm in, I'm intrigued by the concept. I'll leave it as that for now. Hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, like what you're saying about um how they print like such good quality stuff. Um, uh, yeah, it it's yeah, uh, it's definitely like a lot better than other brands, which is also why it will be around a lot longer um and even doing things like changing plastics if they need to like they they are able to take more risks uh in any kind of field with like producing pieces or um trying new kind of franchises uh because they're already like a, a multi-million dollar company yeah um, it's a bright future, I'll say that. Uh, the last 10 years have felt like a renaissance for LEGO. And while I feel they've become a little bit too comfortable in many areas, uh, with the Ninjago formula, what has happened to the LEGO movie franchise, with all the little apps, that's a little bit frustrating for me, personally, as someone who loves to see innovation. Um, LEGO's still consistently putting out crazy new ideas like they'll do they did introduce friends in the last uh 10 years and while that wasn't made for someone like me it appealed to an entirely new demographic and that brought them into viewing a an entirely new world of building and all the different colors we got from that as well all the different fun little pastel colors I've seen many boys as well get quite interested in the elves sets. Um, they're very well well constructed, and we also saw the reinvention of the construction line, even though that hasn't had the best track record overall with Hero Factory, Bionicle, and the Star Wars buildable minifigures. Lego hasn't stopped innovating, and... Over the next few years, I think we're looking at some exciting stuff. I'm intrigued by the new nin Nintendo partnership as well. Um, we're definitely going to see the, some minifigures from that in the next few years, and I'm I'm eager to see what happens with that too. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, it is definitely frustrating when uh, Lego would kind of like say, "Oh, there's a second Lego movie coming out," and then there's like all these sets that are you know not uh what people would be hoping for because like the first lego movie as a movie was uh pretty universal as, as well as like the way lego would be with that is for all ages and anyone could enjoy it um but i feel like the second one kind of uh didn't follow through on that the second movie was clearly a mixed bag. It didn't have the same directors. Um, the The group they had, the team they had, Chris Miller and Phil Lord, I might have gotten their first and last names mixed up in there, but uh, they created an absolutely brilliant story with the first movie, and the craziness we saw in that year uh, with the first Lego movie. You saw a flying castle, a flying trash compactor, a uh, cloud cuckoo land, uh, an 80s spaceship. These shouldn't belong in the same theme. Some of these shouldn't be Lego sets at all. But these are something that you would build. A kid would build. And that's exactly where the world of the Lego movie takes place in a kid's head. And the Lego movie 2 has some fun sets. They just never achieved the same impact that the first movie did. And... The core moral of the Lego Movie 2, while very good, of accepting, um, of not judging somebody who has a different perspective than you, 
Um, it's conceptually good. It's a very strong moral, but the presentation and execution didn't quite land in a way many of us hoped for, I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it kind of felt like the the whole like time travel stuff was kind of just thrown in there. Um, but yeah, I, um, yeah, but apart from the Lego movie, uh, I, I really do enjoy, um, all the different kind of creative sets that came with that as well. And the fact that like you were saying, it's, it's also like Lego dimensions, the way they're all in the same universe, but like there, and there's also a lore behind it that makes sense. It's really cool to see. Lego Dimensions, I liked much more in concept, especially the marketing of it was really exciting. Um, they actually got uh, the Doc Brown to uh, the actor to actually get in costume again to unbox a mysterious um, relic he found. And it was stuff like that that really got me interested in the concept. And I feel like it suffered a little bit of TT syndrome. It was fun seeing the interaction between all of the characters from all these different worlds. However, it didn't quite seem integrated in the same way as the Lego Movie Universe did. I felt that each universe was kind of distinct instead of overlapping, and it created this, there still felt like this separation, and it didn't feel like a unified product. It felt like you could play uh, different characters from all, it's like you had all the different TT games crammed together, and that's good. That's really fun, but it's it's not the Lego Movie, I'd say. Yeah, um, yeah, like maybe some uh, like franchises didn't really get their their time to shine in the game. Overall, I I, I think the overall Dimensions was a fun concept um and it was fun seeing the interaction between all the characters and i'm glad it i'm glad it existed i i wish it had a little bit more because i personally wanted a lord vortex character i wanted a lord vortex figure for myself yeah i i definitely like when lego finds creative ways to mix different franchises um but also the, the another fun thing about it is like you could buy separate franchises sets like DC and Marvel and then find a way yourself to mix them together anyway, which I think is also pretty cool. Yeah, make your own crossovers. Come up with your own your own story and explanation. Some portal that causes uh, Batman to have to team up with Iron Man. Uh, that That's fun, and it's a shame that due to uh, le uh, legal issues, we'll never see that happen in official LEGO media. But you can do that for yourself, and that's the next best thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and then you can also like just make up your own characters and stories as well. It it goes back to what you were saying about um, how it's like people create their own worlds and their their own lore behind their own worlds as well. Yes, and that's that's one of the slight disappointing things about the. Um, license characters. They give you all these fantastic uh, detailed and nuanced characters from various film franchises and video games, which is all well and good. However, it doesn't give you the... Um, that might limit your potential in some ways. With the older 90s characters, um, these... you don't know who these characters are. They, uh, you can... you have to insert your own personality onto them. You have to come up with the backstories yourself um and i feel that it's a little bit harder with the licensed characters to do that but with all the i love to see when people will combine a parts from all of these different licenses um this armor from a star wars character uh with uh, legs from a marvel villain and a helmet from a 90s insectoids and that's your character. You don't have to follow any rules. It's something unique. It's something coherent, and it's something fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
but I saw on Instagram as well, there's a lot of like creative ways on there as well to like uh, kind of uh, remodel different uh, figures with different parts from other figures to make them look more like the original figure, it's, uh, the original character it's based on. So like they'd take a different like colored cape or different um, printing on different uh, legs or something and then swap them out and then it actually looks a lot cooler uh, afterwards yeah i i love purist customs like that um i i'm not a huge fan of painting parts but when i see somebody who will especially when it's a character i can recognize um it, it's it's fun seeing them have diff people come up with creative uses to make different costumes for existing characters as well i that's not something i i see enough on Flickr. But I'm sure that's much more prevalent on Instagram. Yeah, definitely. It's um, yeah, lots of people have uh, purist custom accounts that I follow, and uh, they're really interesting to see their uh, ideas. And it, you just think like, with so many pieces for different minifigures, like where do they get their ideas from? Absol absolutely, especially when you have only a handful of parts and pieces. You have to work with what you can, and that forces you to improvise. Okay, I have uh, red legs. Uh, what is some armor? What is a, a torso I could use to work, go with these red legs? And maybe that doesn't work quite the way you want, but you're forced to create something unexpected in the process. Um, right. Well, to is there anything that you'd want to talk about to uh, close off the show? Well, of course. Um, if you are interested in exciting and fun LEGO content, uh, you should really check out Club Rick. That's the name of the YouTube channel I'm a member of and a co-host on. So we do fun live streams with sorting and viewing our viewing uh, people's mocks. We do uh, ideas, highlights. Um, Lego news, stop motion, um, essays, all sorts of uh, Lego content. It is all over the place, and we're looking to, uh, forward to having. We're looking forward to upping the quality very soon, and I'm I'm very excited with uh, the way things are, have been going the last few months since I've joined. Cool. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the channel and the Discord server as well, so anyone who wants to Absolutely. check it out. Yeah, cool. Um, so it was great talking to you. Uh, it was wonderful talking to you as well. It's it's been a fun experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for having me. It I I enjoyed this conversation, and hopefully it won't be our last. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the podcast. Uh, subscribe if you're new here. Give the show a like if you enjoyed. Share the podcast with your friends that also might like Lego podcasts like this. And once again, uh, definitely check out the Clubwork YouTube channel and Discord server. Links will be in the description, so give those a click and uh, say hello to them. They'll, they'll be awesome. Um, yeah, that's all for this week. Goodbye.